Uh, well, let's see. I haven't done one of these uh, YouTubes in a while where I do what I need to do. Uh, later on, I made, I made this thing. I, 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 I what did I do? Uh, uh, took the pineapple, da -da 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 -da, we and then uh, going to have this later on. Make this later on. Uh, I'll make my smoothie this morning, so I use uh, pineapple. But I, I wanted, I did it. Then I sort of put some, um, I put it in a strainer. But I put the um, the gauze, you know, uh, surgical gauze over it, and then, and I got the juice out, and uh, well, juice out. But this here, that's left the, uh, what do you call that? The the pulp, if you will. I'm going to make um, muffins or something, maybe a loaf, something loaf later on. So. To do that, I have to prepare, but in this loaf that I make, I'm going to have, some, this is the raisins and some, uh, what this, raisins and something. Well, I got some raisins here. Uh, and so what I need to do, oh, let me take the ginger, ginger juice. Oh, I'm in South Africa, I'm in Somerset West, but there's this place uh, called Zetler's, near, near, um, near, near uh, Stellenbosch, on the road to Stellenbosch. They had this great, they get this ginger beer. This is amazing ginger beer. It really tastes good, right? A little cat on the thing. And it comes from, what's South Africa? But I don't know where they make it at in South Africa, but it's uh, no preservatives, preservative free within three days. Oh, Breckenfell. And so they make it in Breckenfell. So I'm going to take some of this to uh, put it in the raisins to uh, sort of liquid. Sort of plump up the raisins and cranberries, cranberry, raisin and cranberry for later on. So that's going to take a while to plump up. I guess that little bit of ding going there. So I'll put this back in the fridge. Oh, maybe I have some of this right now. See, the thing is, so I got some palm. This is real pomegranate. You must say real pomegranate, 100% pomegranate, really 100% pomegranate juice. I first learned pomegranate juice in South Africa and uh, just a little bit there. And uh, should I make some? No, I won't. Uh, at the, uh, it's called the Old Biscuit Mill. There's a festival. Anyway, when it first started, this woman came and she had pomegranate. And she advised me and said, Look, this is real pomegranate juice. You can't drink it like juice. You got to take about maybe an ounce, two ounces at the most daily. I mean, a day. No more, no more than that because it's good for blood pressure and stuff like that. So I'm going to use that later on. Let me put this both back in the refrigerator. On there. Oh, also do some coconut water, 100% coconut water, Vietnam coconut water. I like the Vietnam people's coconut water. Uh, okay, I'm gonna kind of make sure you don't. Uh, let me put a little, yeah, like that. Oh, hey, hey. Pick that up later. Okay. So I did that, but because I had the pineapple, once tried this thing, they say pineapple water or something like that. So what I did is I boiled pineapple water. It must have been about 40 minutes or something like that, like that. And then I strained it, so I got the juice like this. Let me taste it. Let me taste it. Soup, 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 soup. Pretty weak water. Well, let's see what happens. Let's cut this. I think so. I'll use that for something I don't know what. Let's see how that is. Maybe I should boil a little bit more. Nah, I won't do that. Oh, but that's not what I'm talking to. <laughs> okay, so, so, so I made my smoothie. I had papaya in the smoothie. I had oh, I had a bunch of stuff in the smoothie. I had papaya. I had pineapple. Uh, cu uh, cucumber. Stuff. I had stuff in the thing. But let's go over here. I want to show you something else that I got. Just to let you know, this is this is one of those uh, what do you call it? Uh, those posts where I'm catching up because you know I'm supposed to every once in a while I tell y'all what's happening as far as diet and what I'm doing in my life. Eh? What I'm doing. I want to move that out the way so you can see that. So let me. Hey, come on, okay? stand up. I don't have my gimbal. That's the problem. I don't have my gimbals. Come on. This av oh, avocado was in that smoothie also. So that was good. There we go. Prop that up. 
Yeah, because I don't have my gimbal. My gimbal was in Kubevu someplace, I suppose. I got to find it. Hey, come on, dang. There we go. That's good enough. I'll leave it like that. Um, but see, the, me and supplements are kind of interesting. I take supplements for a while, and then I don't want to say I get tired of them. But when, when the jar runs out, I leave it alone for a while to get some more supplements. But uh, my sister told me, because I, I really improved uh, a few months of about a couple of years ago, I, I don't know, I started to really walk bent over and stuff like that. Ooh. So my sister advised me to, advised me to get, um, oh, she's a nurse, she invited, advised me to get um, vitamin E. So I went and got vitamin E. So I've been doing vitamin E for about a, less than a month. And the back has actually straightened up, the bone structure, whatever have you. So, but I got the highest quality of the vitamin E. Uh, 670 milligrams, 1,000 IU, whatever that means. Uh, so the vitamin E really helped the posture, whatever. That's kind of interesting, so I got that. At the same time, uh, I got into some mushrooms during COVID, too. About two, about a year, yeah, about two years ago, I was, I was in Brooklyn, two time in Brooklyn, and they had, you know, they have a lot of little street markets that happen, and uh, they had some mushrooms. I First time I've seen all these kind of different kinds of Mushrooms, I know, you know, you don't pay attention like that. And uh, I asked the guy about mushrooms, and he mentioned, did this, this turkey tail supposed to be really good? They mentioned lion's mane. I said, oh, so I got that. I got some, you know, oyster, oyster mustard, all this stuff. But then I wanted to get, then I got um, lion's mane in the tablets. Oh, going like, eee. So I got lion's mane in the tablets. But then when I went, this uh, past week, when I was in, uh, oh, past week, a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was, I was in Grahamstown with my wife because we went on a little vacation. Well, I went to my, what, there's a there's a health food store, whatever you want to call it, in um, in Grahamstown or uh, Marconda, whatever they call it these days. Uh, and it's called, uh, it's called the Mustard Seed. And I, every time I'm there, I go to Mustard Seed because they're expensive, but they got the best quality, everything. So they have, they just got in this uh, Lion's Made Extract. So I got that. So I've been taking this. And it's for, okay, lion's mane is good for, they tell you right here, um, for the brain, yeah, yeah, and the nervous system. I got it for the nervous system, you know. So anyway, so you take a little bit like that under your tongue. Hmm. What do they say, the dosage? I don't know the dosage. I take it every once in a while during the day, you know, whenever I'm around. Like, so usually in the morning and at night, I just took something to demonstrate to you. I'm not going to read the thing for you. So anyway, this is lion's mane, good mushroom stuff, right? And, oh, found out that, we, you know, we all magnesium deficient. So, again, I got the best magnesium I could get. Uh, this is magnesium uh, L-thoronate. That one right there, see the L-thoronate, right? And it, uh, this is a high dosage, but little high dosage. I mean, it's like uh, 400 milligrams. 400 milligrams. That's, that's good. That's cool. Then, last but not least... So it's like the magnesium, you, you, well, I take it before I go to bed. They say take two tablets. I have been taking two tablets. Then the last but not least new thing that I got, because the other, my, my other stuff that I use, like, like the, the, the vitamin D, whatever, I'm in the sun. Well, so I'm not doing that until I get, until I get back, you know, and then I might buy, see what kind of supplements I get then. Then I have this, uh, uh, so I got this uh, olive leaf, olive leaf extract. Now I've been uh, I've known this for 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 for, for a long time. I know about I've, for a long time, maybe ten years, but I never started to use it. It's good for um, blood pressure, something like that. I left my thing over there, my uh, my cup to drink. I'll be right back. Hold on, what do you say? I want to drink. I'm gonna take my little pomegranate juice. That's good for blood pressure too, and I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this blood pressure thing without the, without the medicine there. See the thing about um, I can get I get I can get when I'm in the states I get free blood pressure tablets because I'm in the VA system, but I don't care about that because they have too many side effects, right? So the good thing about you know um, much anything that's natural, just the side effects minimal. You know what I mean? So there you go. So I need to take a little bit of my pomegranate juice. Strong. Mm. So hey, so I take this um. Uh, olive leaf to to basically um, it's like an alternative to my to blood pressure medicine, so I just take that, and uh, that's it. So that's what we 
I'll tell you what's what's new. Always got to eat my avocado all the time. In fact, I put avocado in the smoothie this morning like that. Oh, oh, one more thing. I did this photo. And we, um, my wife, when we went to, uh, I took her on a vacation. We went to Graham Center, the National Arts Festival. Uh, pretty good. Um, to get this back in, in the swing of things, you know. So, because like uh, during COVID, they were down. I think last year they had half virtual, whatever. This time they had all, whatever. They had, they had back to normal. But coming back, we went to um, went to Musenberg, a little, you know, by the beach, a little vacation, whatever, eats or whatever, and just so she can, because because we wanted, to, I had to come to Cape Town anyway. Then uh, you know, after three days, um, we went back. I got I had stuff to do here, working, uh, not working with, because I don't work for them. That ain't actually you can't hire me. <laughs> people people understand you can't pay me, so you can't hire me. But so I'm like that's the way I am. Um, but in coming back, we was talking about the, the, the Metro Rail in Cape Town. You know, if you know anything about what's been happening, you know, most of the train lines are down because of, during the COVID, whatever, whatever happened, you know, they've been burning train cars for, for years and they, they steal the copper, they steal the all kinds of transmitters, blah, 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 blah. They steal that. And so most of the lines are down. I have a few uh, lines running. One of, the, one of the lines is the, the it's called the Southern Route. Whatever it goes to Fisher, which goes past Musenberg, and they have the new train, the new train car there. It's kind of interesting because you can see all the way through, you know, so the crime would be less because everybody can see everybody through. They try to have guards, and at least when I was there about a month ago, whatever, no more than that, whenever I was there last, um, they had, uh, they had basically a guard at every door. <laughs> it was very ridiculous. But now they didn't have that. It was funny. So me and my wife was going back, and um, and it was like after vacation, and I, I took some selfies, right? And I, I just, for some reason, this I took this selfie, and I love, I actually love this picture. Now, the reason why I love it for for a bunch of reasons. Uh, one, she's so, she, the, way, the way she has her hand over over me, it's like, really? I, it's just, uh, I got my half goofy smile on there. She's got her thing like that. And um, she's so relaxed. It was like, it was a good vacation because we relaxed. I like, I know some things about our eyes. Da, 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 da. So anyway, so I got this blown up. I'm going to hang it with me. So I'll see what happens with that. And uh, that's it. I, got, I just give you an update on, on, on the life, what's happening. So there's going to be a really, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out with this place called, or this initiative called Food Dialogues. I think they've been going for eight or nine years. But just last year, they started to get bigger and bigger. And they've gotten some partnerships going on. So in a few years, and it's international. And one of the things I want to uh, talk about something, because, okay, let me throw this this on you, this, this little thing on you so you understand. See, uh, as you can hear, I come from the States, and, and, I'm, and my, my circles, my bump, I've been around a while, and all of the major movements, you know, I've been involved with, as far as North goes. But one of the things, everybody's into Pan-Africanism, right? Like I said, I won't get into that part. <laughs> I have this joke about that. But they always, they, they romanticize about it. And, and then, of course, the Pan-Africanism, uh, well, Pan-Africanism uh, was most um, popularized. I won't say popularized, that's sort of degrades it. But Marcus Garvey was the person that, really pushed it, people recognized it then. But Pan African starts, you know, with Edward Blyden. That's that that before before him, you know? So my orientation is a little different because really it's just an idea not just it's an ideology. You see? They don't really have black people, we don't have strategy and tactics. Anyway, so for, so I'm thinking, man, because right now when, when you say Pan African, it's really just political. If if I go when in Dubai, if I ask the kids what's Pan African, they don't know. <laughs> what's going on, right? Uh, so it's really an academic thing. It's, it's very activists and academics. They know what they know what it is, and they're always talking about I'm a Pan Africanist, blah blah blah, in the tradition of blah blah blah, and all this stuff. And I'm going like, see, I'm a strategic kind of guy. I'm into strategy and tactics, right? And I'm thinking I'm with this food dialogues. They had a panel talking about Pan Africanism. Or they mentioned Pan African. I think they used it as a title. Right, uh, and on this call, it was a, a Zoomy kind of thing, and from Africa, so they didn't have any states or any, they basically was African people from all over talking about this, the, the food and just how the food somehow was linked, right? And I was thinking, you know, that's right, real Pan Africanism, 
I mean, not real power, of uh, uh, a way for Pan Africanism to really be people to understand it is through food. <laughs> so I'm going to develop. I'm going to continue to develop this idea for the next whoever, and then figure out how to how to deal with this because. Well, Pan Africanism, food. Go through food rather than ideology. I'm trying to go through food rather than ideology, academia, or activism. Go through well, activism is everything. Go through food. So use food. Food is how you how Pan Africanism can spread. Just thought I'd come to you with that, just to let you know. Me, me letting you know. Me being T from the Patterson's taking the train to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.